For events, I'm specifying object created colon star, which means that I want my lambda function to get triggered every time a new object gets created inside my bucket. Consider this. You have an AWS Lambda function and you want to trigger it every time an object gets created in an S3 bucket. Can you do this in a few steps using AWS SAM and Cloud9 IDE? Let's find out. Let's start by navigating to the Cloud9 service. Click on Create Environment and give it a name. Let's leave all the other settings to their default values. Hit create, then click on open Cloud9 IDE. Give it a few minutes for the environment to come up, then right click on the parent folder and create a new folder under it called SAM. Inside the SAM folder, I'm going to create another folder called my Lambda. Next, I'm going to drag and drop my lambda function.py file, which prints the event under the lambda handler method and then returns success. Let's save this file under the my lambda folder, then bring in our dependency file called requirements.txt. Since in this case our lambda function does not have any dependencies, I'm going to leave this file empty and save it under my lambda folder. Finally, let's drag and drop our SAM template file called lambda.yml. On line four, I'm defining a resource called mysamlambda, which is of the type AWS serverless function. Under properties, I'm specifying the handler, runtime, and the code URI. The memory size is set to 128 MB. Next, I'm defining an S3 event with two properties, bucket and events. For bucket, I'm referring to the images bucket, which is defined later on line 18, and it has a bucket name of kokchadb images bucket. For events, I'm specifying object created colon star, which means that I want my lambda function to get triggered every time a new object gets created inside my bucket. Let's save this template file under the SAM folder, then navigate to the bash terminal window. Start by typing the cd or the change directory command to go inside the SAM folder, then run the ls or list command to confirm that you see the my lambda folder and a lambda.yml file. Next, Let's validate our template file using the SAM validate command with the hyphen T option followed by lambda.yml. Looks like our SAM template is valid. If there were any errors, this is where it will show up. Now I'm going to run my SAM package command with the hyphen T option for my input template file and hyphen hyphen output dash template dash file for my output template file. Let's also specify an S3 bucket where an archive for our Lambda function can get uploaded. Looks like our SAM package command was successful. We can also confirm this by opening the output template file and verifying that the code URI is now pointing to the S3 bucket. You can also go to your S3 bucket and hit refresh to confirm that you see a Lambda archive file there. Next, I'm going to run the same deploy command with the hyphen hyphen capabilities option. Copy the same deploy command from the previous output and add hyphen hyphen capabilities followed by capability underscore IAM. This gives CloudFormation permission to create a basic execution role for our Lambda function. Let's also give our stack a name, then hit enter to execute your SAM deploy command. Give it a few minutes for the deployment process to complete. In the meantime, we can navigate to the CloudFormation service and check the status there as well. Looks like our stack was successfully created. Let's confirm this 
by going inside our S3 images bucket, then navigate to the properties tab. Scroll down to the event notifications section, then confirm that you see your Lambda function as the destination for all object create events. Click on the Lambda function and confirm that everything looks as expected. Next, let's go back to the objects tab of our images bucket and upload an image file to see if it triggers our Lambda function. Let's upload this image.jpg file, then navigate back to the Lambda window. Head to the Monitor tab, click on View CloudWatch Logs, then go inside the latest log stream. Confirm that you see your event printed in the log stream with both bucket and object information. Finally, if you wanted to delete your stack, head back to the CloudFormation tab, then click on Delete to delete both the stack and all its resources. There you have it. But before you go, here's a question for you. Why did the Amazon S3 bucket become a detective?